I'm getting pretty close to replacing my 12 volt lead acid battery bank here in the solar shed with 12 of these Lifey PO4 cells, which I intend to wire up uh, 4S3P, four cells in series and three cells in parallel. And in my last video, I tested these copper straps, which are made out of copper pipe squashed and uh, drilled uh, to go between the terminals of the cells now there's something else to come on that i need to slightly look again at my design but yes um, i'm getting close and i need to think about a battery management system so it's time for me to take a look at stuart pitaway's diy bms version 4. now i've been running version 3 of Stuart's DIY BMS on the wall of the shed for quite some time now and here it is on my 7S 20P lithium-ion 18650 pack which is nominally about 24 volts um, and you can see it's working away this cell is obviously a little bit higher than its counterparts it's uh, gone into bypass mode these cells have had a reasonable charge today so yeah the hardware has changed a fair bit so i'm going to take one of these modules down bring it to the bench and we can look at the differences now i've managed to find a blank pcb for version 3 and that probably gives us a better comparison but straight off the bat you can see well version 4 is significantly smaller than version 3 and that's probably mainly due to the uh, removal of the 10 watt ceramic resistor which takes up at least a third of the version 3 board. But Stuart has allowed options. You can either populate these uh, large surface mount resistor pads here and create a uh, load resistor or there are still through hole holes here so that you can put a 5 watt ceramic resistor in place of the 10 watt and that's allowed him to save quite a bit of space but also he's using 0805 resistors and capacitors I think it was 1206 before and probably his uh, PCB design has uh, got a little bit better and these are all fairly neatly in rows and this is quite a compact little PCB. Gone has the 80 tiny 85 and it's been replaced with an 80 tiny 841 and straight away you can see that the 841 has more pins so that means Stuart has been able to implement a few more features. So for example Stuart's been able to take two temperature readings in the ATtiny 841, one for the PCB itself and the other for the cell that it is connected to. The Tiny 841 is also powered directly from the cell it is connected to without the need for any sort of regulator like on version 3 and that helps save a lot of power as does removing the Adam 1250 I2C isolation chip and replacing that with a simple opto isolator and just using serial communication so actually now each one of these modules on the version 4 uses less than 1 milliamp whereas previously on version 3 it was sort of 10 11 12 milliamps so that's a huge saving and of course removing the atom and the uh, the converter there has reduced the cost of each module as well for the DIY BMS so Stuart's done a really good job so without further ado, I'm going to dig out the components and, uh, well, build up one of these modules. I haven't got a solder stencil for this, so uh, it's down to the syringe and a bit of manual application. Let's start. Too much. Too much already. Now Stuart doesn't put the component values on the silk screen of the PCB which I guess actually means you could potentially change them if you needed to in the future. Um, so I've got the uh, DIY BMS V4 GitHub page open which includes this CSV file that has the values for all the different components so I need to cross reference with that every time I put a component on the board. 
Um, I was wondering whether to start at the top of this list and work my way down, but actually I think that might be tricky, so I'm going to start at the top of the board and work my way down this board and cross-reference with the CSV in the background. Second component in, the red LED, I'm consulting the schematic to work out which way. This is D3, the red LED, and the cathode needs to point towards the resistor. So it's that way round, I think. There. Okay, hopefully that's right. So this is the main MOSFET, Q1, whoops, which is an IRL, uh, what is it, an IRL ML6244, and uh, I think it's N channel, isn't it? The next value here is marked as D1, but it's a 3-pin SOT23 package. And uh, this was one of the few components that I had to uh, use a more local supplier to get hold of. And this is, uh, if I don't put a hole in my finger, this is a voltage reference. It's basically a Zener or Zena diode. Um, and this one is a 2.048 volt uh, reference shunt, as it's referred to on the packet. And uh, this is what allows the ATtiny 841 to actually read the voltage. Because, of course, if the... AT Tiny's power supply is moving around with the voltage of the pack which it is connected to. It needs some sort of voltage reference, and Stuart has gone for this one, which is the LM4040BIM3. Yes, the thermistor here, I had to get a different one. So I uh, checked the catalogue at LCSC and found something very similar according to the data sheet. So hopefully this will work. R19, in my case, is a CMFB473J4050HAN, not the one mentioned. So yeah, hopefully... I did the right sort of cross-referencing. Oh, it's jumped on there. Almost into position, it has to be said. But not quite. So this thermistor here is designed to read the temperature of the PCB. And of course, these shunt resistors on the left-hand side here are going to be quite close to that thermistor. In fact, the thermistor is in the middle of them so hopefully it should be able to uh, give some sort of accurate reading of the temperature of the PCB. Uh, before I get to the last few components I'm going to put the 
shunt resistors on here. So these are 2.2 ohm and there are eight of them and they're already flying all over the place despite being the largest component I fitted so far. So eight of them, so there are four in series giving 8.8 ohms if my maths is correct and uh, two of those sets are in parallel so I guess it's a four in series two in parallel resistor set which then your 8.8 .8 ohms comes down to 4.4 .4 ohms now that happily 4.4 .4 ohms gives about one amp using ohms law discharge uh, when you're using lithium ion cells which of course charge up to about 4.2 volts so if you've got a 4.4 ohm resistor across a 4.2 volt supply you're gonna use about one amp aren't you a little bit less so due to the fact that my this is going to go on my uh, life epo 4 cells that means it's going to discharge it less than an amp with these resistors which i think should be fine because ooh, my life epo 4 cells all seem very very even and have a very similar capacity so i'm hoping that this little bms system the diy bms will be less about the balancing and more about the monitoring yeah look at those looking pretty good i think and the AT tinies, I think we'll go for the other end of this packet. The AT tiny 841 chip. I'll put that back in my box rather than over the other side. And uh, there will be a pin one marker. Yes, yeah, so there's a slight little dimple now on the top left. And there's a big old one here, isn't there? So I'm guessing. That's your pin one marker. And that seems to be sat in roughly the right place. Only three more components, R2, D2 and R23. R2 is a 1K. That is it. Yeah, I think that is it for surface mount components, right? Okay, oven time. There we are then, done. It looks all right from this angle so i'm pretty pleased i have seen that that resistor has moved around doesn't it i'm going to have to rework that one but all the uh, microcontroller pins they haven't bridged pretty pleased the large resistors all seem to have soldered up quite nicely that pin there looks a bit dry might just put a bit more solder on there's two pins actually that look a bit dry uh but yeah i think that's relatively successful so guess which numpty forgot to press record um i've now straightened up the r18 resistor so that's looking a lot better i added a little bit of solder to a couple of the at tiny pins so that's looking better too but while the uh, soldering iron was warmed up and i was waffling onto a camera that wasn't doing anything uh, I've also put the JST connectors on for the RX and the TX. Remember, this is serial communication. So 
Every module, and in fact the controller, will need an RX and a TX, and they all daisy chain together in one big loop to communicate with each other. Down the bottom, this JST connector is for the power, and of course it's used to actually discharge the cell that it's connected to when the bypass resistors are switched on. There's an ISP header, which I've also soldered in, and the five points here, 2.54 mil pin header uh, for the external sensor, which actually I haven't thought about. I need to look at that um, and see which uh, external sensor Stuart has suggested. So there we have it then. I've uh, built one DIY BMS V4 cell module. Haven't tested it yet. There's no code on this ATtiny 841. That's a whole different adventure in platform I.O. Hopefully you've enjoyed this little adventure. If you have, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.